Guys, before we get started in this video, I need everybody here to leave a like for all those poor, poor animators who are being mistreated and zombified at, over at Bug Films, y'all. Because these episodes are out on Monday now, the whole production cycle has been completely shifted. Everything's going off the walls, but we, as a people, can still come together and like the video. Y'all, this is Exhausted Reviews, where I'm exhausted I make reviews. Today's no exception, we're talking about ZOM 100, Episode 7, and this is the Shizuka background episode. Let's go, we finally know some more about Shizuka, and she, in fact, did not have a good relationship with her father. Surprise, surprise, girls got daddy issues. It all started with, well, it didn't start, but the biggest incident the biggest reminder of her trauma was her finding a lost puppy as a kid and her dad being like bro puppies be gay <laughs> no, i don't know why i said that but he she uh her, her dad is kind of a bum kind of a he's like bro you don't want to end up on the street like a useless pathetic dog honestly he seems like the kind of guy to use gay as a pejorative slur so and i don't mean that as a compliment and our boys attendo man he took up, he, man, he got dealt one shitty hand when his boss decided, you know what, we are just going to, uh, yeah, spike your tires. Bro doesn't even realize the only reason his tires got popped was because his boss, like, put the spikes on the railroad. Doesn't realize that the only reason he's indebted to him is because he fucked it with him in the first place. So, like, it's, it's just kind of hilarious to see him busting his ass off after very clearly getting exploited just clearly blatant explo exploitation and everyone is bullying it too i don't like any of this. this episode makes me so mad all these dudes in baseball suits are just like disgusting people i hate all of them the fact that they're even using zombies as a workforce is just it's kind of ingenious but also logistically it's kind of a freaking dumb idea like they're literally zombies right if anything goes wrong it, you're all dead which we will see that things do except go wrong and this dude right here bro i don't know how how can they all Every single person in here, except for in the baseball uniforms, be fine with bro just literally just wasted an entire bottle of beer for no reason just to call this lady ugly and old. Like, bro, this these this is the guy you're following. This is the guy you're okay with. This is who you wanna. This is who you guys wanna hang out with. Is this dude right here, Mr. Freaking? I don't take drinks from young women, but I'd love to cream and decide this little girl. Nah, bro, y'all are some fucked up people, man. I don't know what's going on in Japan, but in the zombie apocalypse, they'd be letting anything fly over there. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude literally pulls up with the, yeah, I got something else for you to swallow. <laughs> nah, get out of here. I should punch you in your goddamn face. He, this dude treats her like shit, treats Tendo like shit, treats everyone like shit. How did he even, how did people even start following him when he treats everyone like shit? That's why I don't understand. How did people start following him in the first place? And she bro was like, you need to do what I say. You need to remember that I've patched up your car. You need to get me another drink. And that gives Shizuka a flashback to her own childhood. Back when her dad was like, bro, you need to worry about this money. You need to not date this guy because he's a bum. You need to kill this dog because it's, it's, a, it's a, a waste of time. She, like Shizuka being a nice little girl, is just trying to take care of this dog, be a nice girl, and, you know do her homework, have her dog, enjoy her life. She finally has like a real friend because her dad is an elitist asshole who doesn't want her to hang out with normal people like the rest of us. They're all plebs to him. So she finally gets the dog uh, unsick, you know? The dog's healthy now. They're living it up, having a good time. And he's like, bro, uh, by the way, that dog, yeah, we uh, had to put it down. So uh, you're, I, yeah, because you know, do you even know who you are? You're my daughter. So that means you have to do everything I say. You belong to me. You exist to serve me. I gave you this house. I paid for those shoes. You want an allowance? It's like that scene from Everybody Hits Chris. It's like, you want that allowance? I allow you to live in my house. I allow you to wear two raggedy shoes. I allow you to eat my food and sleep in my bed and use my electricity. I allow you, bro. So it's just literally, bro, through her entire life to literally little girl you need to go finish your guitar your violin lessons you need to not hang out with those little with those normal people you need to break up with your boyfriend because he's a fucking dump truck driver in the future dude is broke as fuck bitch you broke as fuck your shoes whack and you don't got no bitches 
So yeah, that's her dad in a nutshell. <laughs> and bro, Judas literally like literally calling Tendo a waste of food. Slow dim with his stupid lazy whims that creates losses just by living. Bro is roasting the ever loving fuck out of him, bro. Bro roasts him so hard, dude actually gets traumatized for the like for a majority of this episode. He literally spends the rest of the episode in in, in like and he really in like a, a, a trance state too. And bro really had the nerve to pull out the full on abusive card and be like, the reason I'm so strict with you is because I love you, man. I beat you because I love you. Really pulling the abusive father card. So it's nice that she's like gonna help step up this episode and isn't letting, you know, bro's like, look at his eyes. Dude is literally in a trance for the rest of the episode. It's honestly kind of crazy how he was able to just slot back into his work life after, after you know, this six episodes of character development and growth he just immediately was traumatized back into his original state of being a poor poor lost soul bro's literally driving around with his daughter like you're different from those people their only home is because they they, they lived however they wanted to really showing uh, and i feel like that's, that's just a rich person mindset because america they do the same thing of like oh these people are homeless because they chose to become drug addicts like that's just not how the real world works. It's not so black and white. And these people who will just use other people for their own gain, and it really comes at, a, at an ironic time, realizing that the workers themselves who are animating this have been overworked and are being crunched and are not, I don't even know through how, how well they're being treated out there. Like, But we know that production has been suffering. And that's like, that's not good. You don't want, like, I mean, near Automata had the same thing happen. You don't want this to happen at all. So, and and even this right here, man, this is this is a perfect example of the working conditions at this place because they literally are like, oh, everything is fine. Somehow, somewhere, some zombie got into this truck, right? And that's the delays coming up. And then literally at the end of the episode, everything is like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna be fine and get out of here. And then a fucking zombie pops out of nowhere and uh and literally. Yeah, so like that's that's the delays, bro. They they just weren't paying attention. None of us were paying attention. None of us knew that there was actually a zombie in here the entire time, and it was called poor working conditions. So it looks like that was the real zombie all along. <laughs> so yeah, what did you guys think of this episode? I really liked Shizuka's you know character moment. She goes in and mess writes with writes something into Akira's notebook at a certain point during the episode and even the guys working here are like bro we don't want to be treated like the laborers y'all better y'all better like you guys need to uh stop so it's it's honestly and she wrote tell off my jerk of a boss in her notebook and so bro's about to step on his notebook dude has the whole the, the fifth flashback scene we've seen in the last two episodes they keep showing us this uh, shark punch scene they're really proud of this scene and you know what shout out to them one thing I do want to talk about real quick, just briefly touch on, is the opening of the show. I know we're almost done with the episode, but is anybody else... I feel like that, the opening, should have shown us that things weren't always right. Because the opening used a lot of clips from the episodes. And even now, even though they, they do change up the clips from the episodes, I've always seen that as kind of like a cheap out. Like, how American cartoons, when they came to America... American anime, they used to just replace the intro with like clips from the actual show. Dragon Ball Z's infamous for that with the Rock the Dragon opening. Some of the fight scenes in Rock the Dragon weren't even in Dragon Ball Z's show proper. So it always feels like kind of a cheap out to use scenes from the episode for your intro. And even Vinland Saga had that happen with its season one uh, part two opening. So I feel like any uh, vigilant eyed viewers would have noticed that things were not running so smoothly when they were using just regular animation in the anime intro so yeah zombies start uh happening Zo uh, we got a big zombie outbreak bro says i don't want to die and it immediately drives into a truck pu pulled by zombies bro so yeah these guys are not the brightest tools in the tool bench <laughs> so tendo being the good guy he is saves his fat sack of a worthless boss and they do an epic, epic explosion. They trap all of the zombies inside of a, you know, a little quadrant made of trucks. And we get the le epic explosion. Bro literally does the action hero movie explosion. And this is the first time they killed zombies here. I feel like that's why they showed this. Because, like, Akira, this is, this is Akira's little first kill 
we're almost halfway done with the series and bro just now killed a zombie so that we're finally getting to the point where people are are taking this serious these zombies have got to go you guys need to start killing more zombies you know so and we end the episode shizuka helps break him out of his trance and he tells off his boss he's like sorry bro i'm never gonna work for you again and everyone's like so yeah sorry bro we're out of here too and you know once they realize that he doesn't actually have any real power everyone leaves and you know shizuka is like you know even though you didn't get what you wanted and you you couldn't feel like you can't find a job there's always gonna be some other kind of job so there is still hope and that's how i feel about these animators you know even after this show has buckled under the pressure already and we don't know when the ending will come already there is still hope that they will learn from this and be able to come out a stronger studio together and not be ruined anymore by all the crunch and the time like issues and everything that's going on so hopefully we can get through this so let me know what you guys thought of this episode in the comments down below and i will see you guys in the next video peace